applying the integral test is often difficult because you need to compute an antiderivative. Later on, we will learn some tests which are easier to apply. For some series, however, only the integral test works. We will encounter an example in this video. Suppose we want to know the convergence of some n starting at 2 from 1 over n times the ln of n. We can define, of course, f of x equals 1 over x ln x. We can try, the, for example, the test for divergence, take x to infinity, you see f tends to 0. So, test of divergence is inconclusive. So, what can we try? We can try to the integral test. We integrate it from 2 to infinity, function 1 over x ln x. Fortunately, uh, uh, we can find an antiderivative. We have to use the substitution u equals ln of x. So du equals 1 over x dx. So the integral, uh, for the integral we get here from this part, 1 over u. And 1 over x dx becomes du. So 1 over u du. Don't forget also to include the boundaries. x starts at 2, so u equals ln of x starts at uh, ln of 2. x goes to infinity, u equals ln of x also goes to infinity. So now we have a different integral. This one is standard. We can write down the antiderivative straight away. So we get the limit r to infinity with upper boundary r, of course, because we have an improper integral. Antiderivative of 1 over u equals ln of u. So there we have the ln of u. Uh, plug in the boundaries. We get the ln uh, of r minus the ln of the ln of 2, which is some number. That doesn't matter because this part blows up. So our integral divergence, and so does the series. Next example. Sum n from 1 to infinity uh, sine squared pi n. So the integral test was working so nice, so let's try to do it again. f of x equals sine squared of pi times x. So I want to integrate from 1 to infinity, f x dx. So that's the same as taking uh, limit capital N to infinity, uh, integrate from 1 up to capital N. And now I took a capital N to emphasize that N is going to be an integer later on. So how can we do that? If we integrate from 1 to infinity, we can also integrate from 1 to 2, plus from 2 to 3, plus from 3 to 4, plus from 4 to 5, plus from 5 to 6, etc. etc. So that's what we do over here. Integrate from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, etc., etc., and I add all the contributions. So those, all those integrals have an integral, uh, integration interval of size 1, and we add all those integrals up later on. So that's the plan. How are we going to integrate sine squared pi x? We don't know an antiderivative straight away. Fortunately, you know the, the sum formulas for the cosine and sine very well by heart. You have to know those formulas, otherwise you we will not get the idea how to find the antiderivative. So if you have, for example, the formula for cosine 2x, that equals 1 minus 2 times sine squared x, so you can solve for sine squared x, sine squared x equals 1 half minus 1 half times the cosine of 2x. So you know sine squared of pi x equals 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 pi x. So you can't integrate a sine squared pi x directly, but you can integrate the cosine of 2 pi x. So that's what we are going to use. Integral sine squared of pi x equals the integral of 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 pi x. So that will be a x over 2 from 1 half. And the other contribution will be a, a sine 2 pi x divided by minus 1 over 4 pi. Well, I wrote it now as an improper integral, so you have to add the constant over here. And now you see why we uh, integrated from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4, from 4 to 5, etc., etc. Because if you integrate now from n to n plus 1, you get an uh, n plus 1 minus n, so 1 times 1 half from the x, so that gives you 1 half. Uh, integration constants, of course, always cancel out if you have uh, definite integrals. But those terms over here, from the sine to pi n, they, those are also all zero because you have sine 2 pi, sine 3 pi, sine 4 pi, etc., etc. So all those contributions cancel out. So all those integrals of here are just one half. So now we can compute the full integral fx dx because uh, we know that's the limit n to infinity over here. We know all those integrals, they are all one half, so substitute one half. 
So we have to add one half plus one half plus one half plus one half n minus one terms times. So that yields one half times capital N minus one. And if you now take capital N to infinity, we see that the sum blows up. So the integral blows up, so the series blows up. Well, no, something is wrong here. Because the series does not blow up. In fact, the series is exactly zero. Why is that? And why doesn't the integral test work? Well, that's a good question to discuss on the forum below the video.